Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, nine brand new games tested on the GTX 1080 Ti and the RX Vega 64. I have never tested these nine games on my channel before. I am cycling my game test to bringing you some new stuff. Both of these cards were tested on the i7 8700K, 5 gigahertz no AVX offset on this ASUS motherboard on my test bench back there. I'm gonna show you 1080p, 1440p, and 4K benchmark results, both average and minimum frame rates on these nine games. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about where I think they are positioned in the market and what you should probably buy. I have previously done a video on both of these video cards separately showing the unboxing and going over their features in detail, so I'm not going to repeat that here. Instead, I'll link to those down below. The first half of each of those videos actually shows it coming out of the box and the specific features, so go take a look at those if you're interested in these cards specifically. Also linked down in the video description below will be links to Amazon and Newegg for both of these cards, as well as all the 1080 Ti's and all the Vega 64's because you might find one that's a better price at the time you watch this video. Generally, the performance is within a few percentage points or a few frames per second, regardless of which brand card that you buy. I'm just using these. But as a general rule, you will find that the 1080 Ti is currently running about $100 more expensive than the RX Vega 64. So if the performance is the same, the Vega 64 is better. But if the 1080 Ti is more than about 10 or 15% faster, then it's actually the better deal, even though it tends to cost a bit more. Now, prices will change in the future, but that's what they are at the time I filmed this video in April of 2018. If you have any suggestions on other new games in 2018 that you would like to see benchmark between these cards or perhaps more mid-range cards, leave your comments down in the comments section below. I'm in the process of cycling my game collection because I have a number of games that are now several years old in my test suite, and so these nine games are sort of the introduction to 2018 and a whole brand new test suite of games. And with that being said, on to the first benchmark. Our first test is Assassin's Creed Origins, and this one is at high detail. I'll call out the details as we go because they do vary depending upon the game tested. At 1080p, our average frame rate was 117 FPS on the GTX 1080 Ti versus 82 FPS on the Vega 64. This is a larger difference in terms of performance than the cost of the cards, and I will have a dollar cost per frame per second chart at the end of the video. Taking this to 1440p, you see 94 and 66, and then at 4K, you see 62 and 41. Please note that these cards are priced about the same or within $100 of each other, which is why they're being compared. I didn't really expect the Vega 64 to be faster in a game like this. I was hoping it would be closer with updated drivers. Unfortunately, there really is a fairly large performance gap here. And then you can see the same with the minimums as well. At 4K, we get 47 frames per second minimum on the 1080 Ti versus 33 on the Vega 64. That is a huge real-world performance difference, and it would definitely be noticeable. While it is true that the GTX 1080 Ti will not do ultra max detail at 60 plus frames per second at 4K, frankly, I think high detail is a good compromise. And if you're looking for a 4K card, the 1080 Ti will do it at high detail. It will also do it at 1440p ultra at 60 plus frames per second, or as you can see in this case, nearly 100 frames per second at high detail. If you have a 1440p high refresh rate monitor, it's really basically a GTX 1080 Ti or bust. The next new game in our testing is Far Cry 5. This was just released. This is at high detail. And again, the 1080 Ti is faster, but that's really not a surprise. It is a faster card, but the gap is a little bit narrower this time around. 151 to 123 at 1080p average is quite respectable. If you have a high refresh rate monitor, if you want super fluid gaming, there you go. Let's skip 1440p for a minute and talk about 4K. 61 frames per second average, 52 minimum on the 1080 Ti. This is completely and totally smooth and playable. This doesn't make 45 and 39 on the RX Vega 64 bad per se, but 61 to 45 is a fairly healthy 26% performance deficit. Considering there's only a $100 uh, price difference between these cards, that's a fairly decent jump. Coming back to 1440p again, if you have a 100 hertz 1440p monitor, the 1080 Ti does a great job. But the Vega 64 is not that far behind. If you have a FreeSync monitor, 
The main thing about the Vega 64 is the price. If the price were $100 to $200 less, I think it would be much more competitive. I'd be comparing it to the 1070 Ti or the 1080. But since those cards are two to 300 less expensive than the Vega 64 right now, well, we're comparing it to the 1080 Ti. Next up, we have Gears of War 4. Now this game didn't just come out in the past three months, but it is new to my channel. I have not benchmarked this before, so, 208 frames per second on the 1080 Ti at 1080p versus 149. Now, both of those are plenty fast, so either card would be fine. And frankly, at high detail, it's a little bit overkill. Now, this game may serve more use in future testing on lower end cards since these kind of crush it completely. But if you wanna see how much performance gap there really is between these two cards, this simply shows it very clearly. Look at the 1440p average, 161 to 105. That's not just a 10 or 20% ish difference. That is a huge performance difference. That would absolutely be noticeable on a high refresh rate monitor. Now we have our first game here that shows the Vega 64 as a winner. Now the frame rate is still a little bit slower than a 1080 Ti, but remember the Vega 64 costs less. 123 to 122, we're actually CPU limited at 1080p, but if you come all the way to 4K to see the difference, 84 to 70 is not a huge gap. If you find the Vega 64 for a deal, if this sort of game is your thing and you've got a free sync monitor, it might be worth considering. Just keep in mind the compromises with the Vega line, which I'll mention later in the video, versus the 1080 Ti, but if you're okay with that, this is very, very competitive performance with Nvidia's top of the line card. This game also demonstrates how easy it is to get the results that you want based upon the games which you're testing, which is why there were game tests in the original unboxing of the two cards, which were different games that are being shown here. The goal is not to have bias by showing games optimized for only one platform or another and have enough different games that you can see a wide spectrum of performance. Next up, we have another game that wasn't released last week, but it is brand new to my channel and to my testing, the second racing game, F1 2017. Now, this one is being tested at ultra detail. Why? Because take a look at the performance. High seemed a little bit ridiculous because the frame rates were just CPU limited. 190 to 149, 1080p average, 148 to 113, 1440p average, and 89 to 67, 4K average. What can I say? Unlike Forza Motorsport, this one definitely favors the Nvidia card, but of course performance was fine across the board and this game would run fine on much lesser hardware. Warhammer Dawn of War 3 Ultra Detail. This is really, really close. Now the 1080 Ti is faster, but when you take the price into account, it's almost dead even. There is a very, very small price to performance difference between these two cards. They are within a percent or two of each other. The only place where there's a bigger percentage difference is at 4K, but at 1440p, the difference is within 1% performance per dollar spent at least at the price of the cards today. So very good showing on Vegas part. Final Fantasy 15 high detail benchmark run. Now, these are not frame rates, these are overall scores. This is the downloadable benchmark run. It's free to download. You can download it yourself, run it on your current computer and compare performance to see how much faster these are versus whatever you may be running right now. I am aware, and full disclaimer, the benchmark that you can download is not necessarily reflective of the game's performance. This is meant to be sort of a synthetic test to compare different cards rather than to give you an absolute performance number of what you can expect. And I hate to tell you, but the 1080 Ti obliterates the Vega in this. This isn't even close, which you can clearly see here. At 1440p detail, we have a nearly 39% performance difference. And I promise you, there's not 39% price difference between these cards. The Vega 64 would have to be like a $500 card to justify these this performance right here. Not all games like Vega, not all games like AMD, unfortunately, and this one is clearly in NVIDIA's camp. I am willing to bet that a stock GTX 1070 would give this Vega 64 a run for its money in this specific test. I might actually test that at some point, go back and test all the games in this just to show you a chart of how it ladders and performs as you go up the various cards. 
World of Tanks Encore Benchmark Testing Ultra Detail. Now this is based on the new 1.0 release with the new graphical updates of World of Tanks. This is the free downloadable benchmark. It's more consistent than me trying to do random battles. When I'm comparing graphics cards rather than doing will it plays, this makes a lot of sense. It's relative performance. And I hate to say it, but again, this is the same as the Final Fantasy. The GTX 1080 Ti obliterates the Vega 64. This is a 40% performance difference with only maybe a 12% price difference between the cards. This is why it is so hard to recommend the Vega cards because there are games like Forza Motorsport 7 where they're really close and it actually makes sense to do the Vega. And there's other games where it's closer as well. And then you play a game like this or Final Fantasy where it's just not even in the ballpark. It's just absolutely crushing in terms of performance difference. The biggest single problem the Vega cards have is not that they're not great when they are great, it's that they're not great all the time. The 1080 Ti is great all the time. It doesn't have any games where it falls apart like this. And that unfortunately is the biggest single reason not to buy a Vega card. Total War Warhammer 2 Ultra Detail. There are two built-in benchmarks in this game, Battle and Campaign. I ran them both. I'm showing you the results here that comes out of those built-in benchmarks. And yeah, there is up to a 42 plus percent performance difference between these two cards. It's same thing as the two previous tests. The Vega 64 is fine until it isn't. These numbers are not horrible until you consider that this is in April of 2018, an $800 graphics card, in which case this is ridiculous because $100 more buys you the green bars worth of performance. So all I can tell you is this game clearly doesn't like the Vega card. Dollar cost per frame per second lower is better. I took the seven games with actual FPS numbers, added them all up, divided them by the number of games, and then divided it into the price of the cards. These don't need any further math because I've done it for you. I am taking an average of $900 for a 1080 Ti and $800 for the Vega 64, which is the current price for these cards on the day I recorded this in April of 2018. You can find both of these cards in stock right now on Newegg for those prices, and that's the best price available on a major online retailer. If you take a look at these numbers, what this essentially means is that for 1080p average, you're paying $6.15 per frame per second on the 1080 Ti and $7.19 per frame per second on the Vega 64. The Vega 64 costs more for its performance even though the card costs less. Same thing with 1440p, and at 4K, it's even larger in terms of difference. $13 per frame per second versus $16.45. Vegas simply loses in terms of performance at this price point. Now, if this were a $600 Vega 64 instead of an $800 Vega 64, these numbers would be much closer and even slightly in favor of the Vega, depending upon which games you're looking at. But it is worth noting that even though the 1080 Ti is a higher priced card, it's actually the better deal. There you have it, nine games tested. The GTX 1080 Ti is indeed faster than the RX Vega 64. Most of the time, price to performance, the 1080 Ti is actually the better value because its performance is faster than the price increase over the Vega 64. But that's at current prices in April of 2018. If that changes in the future, if there's a two to $300 price difference, if you find a good deal on a Vega, it might be worth picking up. And of course, the performance doesn't take into account G-Sync support versus FreeSync support, which maybe matters to you. That being said, I commented on this in the Vega 64 video, and I feel the need to comment on it once again. While I was able to successfully complete all the tests that you see here on both of these cards, I did it the first time every time on the 1080 Ti. I had a number of hard locks and system freezes on the RX Vega 64, and the only way to truly prevent those was to lower it, was to downvolt the car to lower the voltage in Wattman and or put it into power saving mode. It runs hot, it runs loud, it consumes a lot more power than the 1080 Ti, and it's slower. I hate to say it, but the Vega 64 just didn't quite live up to what people were hoping and expected, and I would want to see it pretty cheap before I would consider buying one relative to a 1080 Ti. This runs cool and quiet, it's stable and 100% dependable in all things, even when left on for hours at a time, even in a loop in a benchmark. Unless you are really price sensitive or absolutely have to have FreeSync support or have sworn off NVIDIA for whatever reason, if I had to pick between these two cards, I would absolutely go with NVIDIA. Now, 
That being said, one of the questions people are bound to bring up in this video is, wait a minute, these aren't quite in the same performance class. Why not test this against, say, a 1070 Ti or 1080? I appreciate that, but these are the flagships of both companies. These are the top-end cards. They're also closest in price. A 1070 Ti is currently two to three hundred dollars less expensive than a Vega 64. And so while it's more comparable in performance, it's so much cheaper that there's really nothing to discuss there. These are really where it is in terms of price. I was hoping that the AMD drivers would be better, that perhaps the aftermarket cooled card, it's the first Vega 64 I've done, would be better than the, the blower cards at launch. Not really. My advice, if you're at the top of the pack looking for the best of the best, it's basically 1080 Ti or bust. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments and game suggestions down in the comment section below. Please check the links for those video descriptions, both to the videos on these cards and to Amazon and Newegg for these cards as well. Those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. If this was interesting, informative, entertaining, or otherwise useful, please use those when shopping. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.